Hey guys, welcome back to the CCC, or as on Monday I like to call it, Crossfire at the CCC. <laughs> um, hopefully today we'll be more on the same page. I think this is a drink that I think we both would agree actually has a lot of potential, and uh, but kind of, as we said, Monday sort of lost its way back in the 70s, I think is when Amaretto Sauger as were really probably the most popular. I think so, the Amaretto Sauer was most popular in college. I didn't realize you are that old. You were in college in the 70s? My point is, it's not the 70s. I think no matter when you went to college, that's yeah. when Amaretto Sour was popular. Okay, fair enough. See, Crossfire just extends through Wednesday. Uh, reading about the Amaretto Sour and Red, that's one of those drinks that when you order it at a bar, the bartender will automatically check your ID a second time. That's hilarious. I was going to say roll their eyes, but yeah. So, all right, so the irony here, we talk about bartenders, and you know, I think the, the whole term mixology has sort of, I think, been kind of overdone and I think it's gone a little too far where I think everything has to have like 19 different ingredients in it and you know 14 different bitters and all this crazy stuff and at the end of the day it, what we're trying to do at CC is make drinks approachable but while yes you know learning to take classics maybe were done poorly before and making them fresher we talk about that every time bringing the kitchen to the bar so it's sort of a balance of mixology but also keeping things really light and approachable and I think this is a perfect drink that reflects that this is a drink that at its core, amaretto is very easy, very relatable to most people. And while well, the old days, the sour mix, which we obviously did never touch at the CCC, we're making our own version of that. But then also combining the inspiration from a bartender I mentioned on Monday, uh, Jeffrey Morgenthaler up in Portland, who actually has created what I've, I've actually read is sort of the industry standard now for amaretto sour. If you order an amaretto sour at a better bar, this likely will, will be what you get. Uh, it's become that popular based on what I've read. You come to my bar, this is what I'm making here. Yeah. Absolutely. I found really refreshing about this is, is, is uh, a couple of quotes that I, I read from Morgan Thaler was, you know, he was basically taking what, you know, we've applied, or he said what we've applied over the you know, last 10 years about mixology, quote unquote, and just making the, a drink that, again, lost its way, the, really the way it should have been made originally. Uh, we're not overthinking it. It's keeping really the core ingredients the same with one little tweak. Um, so the core ingredient here being amaretto is not a high proof spirit. It's also rather sweet. So his goal, which I think he achieved, was sort of grounding that sweetness well, without taking away that classic amaretto, that, that, that almond flavor. And also while not taking away the, the tart and the sweet, while still removing the, the sour mix, which is a big no-no. I think what you'll find today is, again, a, a refreshing, slightly higher proof version of the amaretto sour that you may have had in college, uh, whether that's the 70s, 80s, or 90s, or 2000s. So a couple things. First of all, if we're not going to use the sour mix in this, does this make it an amaretto martini? It's hilarious. Only if you put it in a martini glass, right? Sorry, you... I couldn't resist. I, I hear you. Uh, the basic flavor of amaretto is almond, but then they'll also use apricot pits or peach pits or all those weird things in there. Anyway, it's actually a, a pretty complicated process to make amaretto. But the interesting thing that I found about amaretto is the word itself, amaretto, is actually a diminutive of the word amara. Interesting. In Italian, right? So it means little bitter. Right which is strange because it, I think originally it was using a bitter almond as its flavor, but then I think over time commercially, they've been adding more and more sweet to it. So now by little bitter, they mean not even remotely bitter at all. Like, like very little bitter. Right. Bryce and I already kind of talked about uh, beforehand, we're actually do, gonna do a, a couple different ways. We're both gonna use egg white, but uh, Morgan Thaler's recipe actually calls for a little bit less egg white than we're used to using in the CCC, and that I think most people use when they use egg whites. They just take out the egg yolk, whatever's left they use. He specifically calls for half ounce. Really, he's very passionate about egg white and not using too much, and that he wants just a little bit in there for the mouth feel. But also, he does not actually recommend dry. He, well, you can dry shake. His preference is actually actually to use an immersion blender, which or like a what do you call yours? It's not really a blender. It's a, a whisk. It's an Aero Latte. There you go. So if you've got one of these little fancy contraptions, he actually recommends that on an immersion blender versus dry shaking to make it extra fluffier. So using less, but getting more texture out of it. Well, still start with the egg white in case you screw it up. Yes, and in fact, I'm actually gonna measure out what half ounce looks like. So right and I just did a little exercise here, checking to see what an average large size egg produces in terms of egg white. And we actually both got closer to, I was just over three quarters of an ounce. And is a full ounce. Full ounce. So, uh, and we also learned it's not so easy to separate an egg white out. So it took, it took a few minutes, but if you can, again, just for the, I think, for the integrity of this recipe, try to get to a half ounce of egg white. So it's not quite a full egg. 
And then the other big change or shift in this recipe, so a classic amaretto sour would call for two ounces of amaretto. And one thing that Morgenthaler was really passionate about in his recipe was that, felt very strongly about, was that amaretto on its own is just so sweet uh, and needs to be kind of grounded. Like too cloyingly sweet? He did use that term. I know you love that word. Uh, love that. Yes, yes, that exact term he used. Uh, so to balance it, he actually recommends going down to one and a half ounces and adding uh, high proof bourbon. So ideally something over hundred proof, so cast strength, barrel proof. So if you have a stronger bourbon, he recommends it. I'm using, I think it's 101 proof to be exact. This Rowan's Creek. I've got a Garrison Brothers, it's 94. It's the highest proof I've got. Whatever you have will work guys. I'm just, you know, again, if you're wanting to, to sample the exact recipe, he's going stronger, but you know, any bourbon will work. I think three quarters works best in here just to give it a little more oof. And then one ounce of lemon juice. Fresh, obviously, not sour mix. Always fresh. And then another key uh, twist in the recipe was, you know, traditionally you would call for often equal parts simple or maybe even two to one citrus to simple. On this one, he specifically said just a teaspoon of simple syrup. Now, he did call for a two to one simple syrup, less of it, but a, a richer simple syrup. Amaretto, even though we've reduced it, is still rather sweet. And then I'm going to dry shake because I don't have that fancy little hoo-ha tool you have. So I'm gonna try using this guy instead of dry shaking. Let's see what happens. This guy's actually meant for coffee drinks, yeah. So that is a really great tool for this. I don't know that, I don't know if you can see, but it's pretty good and whipped. Wow. Yeah. Well, again, he was very clear about using, he, he absolutely recommends that method versus a dry shake. After we dry shake, we wet shake. Again, guys, remember, if you're using egg white, make sure it's extra tight and you really wanna hold from the top. You don't want to just shake like this, put your hand on top and actually hold it in. It smells delicious already. Okay, strain it over. Ice. I like that glass. Thank you. I like this glass too. It's fun. And it's easy to hold. Now the recipe didn't just stop with the ingredients. You know, he really wanted the garnish to also reflect sort of an updated take on a, an old, old classic. And by the way, I still think this is an old classic. I know we, had, we went around around about classics or not. I think this is a classic. It's just, a, it's more of a kitschy, 70s-ish college era classic. Sticking with that. Um, a classic version of this would call for typically like an orange slice and one of those famous red shitty cherries. So his take on that was to go a little more tart. So he, uh, a lemon peel and a new updated cherry. So whether it's Luxardo, I actually have Amaretta cherries coincidentally. So these are actually, I think a perfect addition. But if you have Luxardo, anything that's not a red cherry really will work with this one. No shitty cherries. No shitty cherries. So simple. Lemon peel, good cherry, call it a day. I made the same one. Very nice. I have to say, this is one I think, this is gonna be one of our more underrated sort of sleeper drinks out of all of our drinks. I think it's gonna be really rather popular and kind of a new way to freshen up our, our, our bar, our typical bar menu that I'm always making certain drinks. I feel like this is a good, very comfortable drink to, to have. It is comfortable, I like that word, comfortable, it's safe. Yeah. Comfortable, but it's not the disgusting amaretto sour that, you know, you wanted to drink because you don't like the taste of alcohol. I mean, now you, once you add, you know, a high proof bourbon in there, it, you, you do taste the whiskey. You probably want to taste a little bit of whiskey, but it still is a sweet, easy drink. And yeah. easy to eat for other people too. And everyone's got that bottle of, of amaretto laying around that no one knows what to do with. And actually, you just, you just made a interesting point. Much like the, the lemon drop martini on Monday uh, and other drinks we've made, uh, lately really is, you know, there's been, I think there's an opportunity out there for whether it's a gin and tonic that people don't like gin, but they like new gin and tonics. They don't like alcohol in general, but maybe like a lemon drop. This is a good way to get people into bourbon. So I think there's a lot of you out there that don't think you don't like bourbon. This is one that isn't like over, overly bourbony, but I think it's a good way to kind of get your feet wet. Enjoy. So for Friday, we are going to do another kitschy classic. We need fresh orange juice for this one and some uh, pomegranate, either pomegranate or pomegranate juice. Don't forget that. We'll have an extra bonus lesson in there and some tequila. I'm excited for that one too. It's a good Friday drink. It's a good Friday drink. All right, guys, enjoy. Cheers, Rice. Cheers, Jason.